Hello my wonderful friends, Megus with you on a beautiful day in Asha and I'm really excited about today's message as I am I guess all of them. I think I say that every day uh, but today we're going to do a question and answer and one of my wonderful friends today so passionate about sharing Asha and he kind of um, had his faith shook. Uh, a lot of his Christian friends have been coming against him and you know saying well you're supposed to believe in Jehovah not Ahura Mazda. You're supposed to believe in the Bible, not Asha and the Avesta, you know, and, and it can shake you up. And I went through it myself. And I'm going to ask you guys, uh, bear with me for a little bit. Uh, I promise you, by the end of this message, it does, it changes your life. It rewires you with higher truths, and your life will never be the same. But I, I could tell as I was putting this together, this is not going to be one that uh, uh, it just flows easily. It's not going to be a passionate teaching video. It's going to be sharing my heart and what I went through. And those videos are the hardest for me uh, because you have to dig deep. Uh, you have to go into those places and those memories and, and, and draw them out. And I can tell this is one of those messages. But if you stick with me, I, I can guarantee you that your life will never be the same. You'll have a new way of seeing things. You'll have new beliefs. And my friends, if you believe that our world is made from our beliefs and you raise your beliefs, then you raise your existence. And so I'm just asking uh, at the beginning here, just bear with me. Let me kind of put these together. Uh, don't make me have to be entertaining, you know, uh, but just let me share my heart, I guess is what I'm saying. So my wonderful friend, he, he got his faith shook, and I know exactly what he's feeling. I'm going to give you a few great examples of this. Uh, when I first started teaching Asha, I used to do what I call symposiums, and I'd have people to the house, uh, Baptist preachers, Taoist, Buddhist, uh, just all different walks of life and get down and I, I would share my message with them and they had shared theirs and then we were talking my god I mean I I know often they went three hours but sometimes many more and many times uh, they would end up just screaming at me I, I told you the one story the Baptist uh, preacher jumped up and uh, his wife had to grab him and sit him back down uh, a family member of mine uh, threatened to throw me over the rail that we we're sitting out on a porch you know and uh, they got violent and angry and, uh, and I'll tell you why I wasn't uh, provoking them I wasn't being angry I was just presenting truths you know and um, I've, I've been to Bible college, you know, and so I knew their Bible better than they did. And so I was able to take them through the stories and, and tell me, explain to me this, explain to me that. They couldn't do it. And my friends, when I was in Bible college, they had a class that was called apologetics. And the whole class was just designed around when people came up with really good questions about Bible stories uh, that you would have an answer to them. And my friends, when I was taking that class, I was thinking, these questions are really good. These answers are not really good. And, but that's what you get. And I see that like when I talk to these different pastors and, and I bring up these stories uh, and they just give me that canned answer. So my friends, you can get a doctor. Matter of fact, the guy I got into this conversation with, he had a doctorate in theology. So you can get be a doctor in anything, whether it's helpful or intelligent or not, you know. And um, he got so mad that uh, after a few hours, we had to end of the discussion because he was getting violent. And my friends, all I was doing is presenting the higher ideas and all good God. And you've seen me do this before. If you're, if God means good, the highest principle of good, that's the Germanic word for God, is good. And so if your highest principle of good God can hate, war, kill, destroy, my friends, you're never going to rise above that. If you and us if it was individuals, we don't rise above that, then our world never changes. There's never world peace. There's never uh, unconditional love. Because if you're God, your highest principle that you can come up with, think of, you know, can hate, war, kill, isn't unconditional love. It loves you as long as you're doing what you're told, or you can be destroyed, you know. And thank God I found 
Zoroastrianism, uh, where the original monotheistic religion that Christianity, Islam, Judaism all branched off of, they first taught an all good spirit that has no attributes. They called it the original word. Oh, that's so beautiful. The original word, the original idea of the perfect creator's perfect idea was all good and has no attributes of the evil spirit. But what did they do with Christianity, uh, Islam, Judaism? Uh, they added attributes to God that aren't his, such as hating, war, and killing. And my friends, I, I know it can be exhausting. After I do one of those, what I called my symposiums, literally for two or three days, I would be down. I mean, in bed, just exhausted. Uh, because I'm thinking, why can't I get this? It's a simple truth. God is good. That's the message of Asha. God is good. Has no attributes of the evil spirit. Why can't I get that through people? And I'm going to tell you why right now. From the last uh, semester, trimester, excuse me, uh, till seven years um, you're in a theta state and you're basically, uh, you can be hypnotized. And, and so everything a parent, teacher, preacher tells you, you take that in is truth. So these people, they've been hypnotized for seven years and, and they believe that's truth. And it don't matter what you're telling them, they're going to fight back with you, no matter how ridiculous their answer is, no matter how good your question is, no matter how good I could put together the truth and show them the history uh, and show them timelines, and they couldn't wrap their mind around it because they've been hypnotized, my friends. And then on top of that, past in your very genes and DNA is encoded information from their parents and their grandparents and all through the generations that you have to overcome. And it seems like almost an impossible mission that we have here for such a simple message. God is all good. Be good. Stop doing bad. Stop you know, loving people only when they do what they say. Stop killing. Stop hating. Stop. It's so simple. But my friends, They've been hypnotized. Uh, they're asleep and they're running on these subconscious prompters. They're not thinking. Uh, uh, and I think, what is it, 95% of the time we run on our subconscious prompters without thinking. And my God, it's time someone starts to think. If we want to see this world change, uh, and, and it's going to happen, and I'll tell you why, information is flooding in right now. And, and there's an obvious choice to be made. Uh, when you see this much information in front of you, uh, you almost have to lie to yourself. You get to a point where uh, you have to make a choice that, you know, I just don't want to go back. You think, well, why would someone want to do that? I I'll tell you a couple reasons. A story I love that we've talked about before was the uh, reporter that wondered, do Nazi guards have any remorse now that all this information has come out about Hitler and the regime and that it was wrong and, and all the museums that uh, shows all the horrific things that happened in the little baby shoes where they were gassed and just horrible things and uh, there was uh, one Nazi guard left I think in his 90s uh, and they went and you know did an interview and said do you feel remorse now and he, he said no I do not because I did it for God and I did it for my country. And, and he'd have felt no remorse. Cause, and he's thinking he did those horrible things for God and country. But my friends, that happens in all the different countries around the world. Because people are brainwashed to think you're doing something for God when you're killing and hating and working out of fear. And, and you know, for myself... It was hard for me. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I was grown up in the Christian religion. Uh, I've been to Bible college. And uh, there's a fear that's put into you that you don't go against your religion or the Bible or you're going to go to hell. And it's it, it's scary when you have to look at those things. And, and I remember I called it my dark cave experiences. And as I was putting this together, um, it was years in the making. And I would have to look at everything I was taught through all those years in Christianity, every story, and break it down. And my gosh, sometimes I would get lost in these dark places, and it was scary, and I would, I would get depressed, and I'd cry out, Good Spirit, help me. But you know what? I started to find Ahura Mazda, the All Good Spirit. He came to me every time and walked me through it. I mean, supernatural things were happening, dreams and visions, and, and just amazing things 
things and synchronicities and where Jehovah for all those years never ever came to me where it almost became a joke my friends like I would pray I'd get sick and I'd pray that Jehovah would heal me right and uh I would get like my neighbors would that were what I considered heathens at the time, they would get over their cold in seven days. I would be into it two weeks with an infection, you know? And it's just everything like that. And I was so frustrated and I could never win in that Christian religion and that it is, it, with Jehovah, you know, with those ideas. And I'm so thankful now uh, because you, you could get lulled into it. Even if, you know, 50% of the time, just out of luck, your prayers were answered. Uh, you, you'd start to just be able to reason it. Well, I must have done something wrong that time. It wasn't answered. You know, I must have uh, been uh, a sinner. I must have held some wrong, uh, you know, thought in my heart or what. I don't know. But I never got my prayer answered through the Christian religion. And I was always suffering. And, and then they always had an excuse why. And, and, and it was just, it was torture for me. From a small child, I was so scared, my friends, with all the end time movies that were coming out. And I remember my grandma came and got me and took me to her church and I watched the scariest movie about the end of the world and people's heads being cut off and it scared me so bad. I was so scared of life. I was so scared of Jehovah. I was so scared that I was going to commit an unforgivable sin. Oh my God, that haunted me into my 20s. I was so scared if I had a wrong thought that what if I committed the unforgivable sin? What if I'm going to burn in hell for eternity? And it was just hell on earth, you know. It was so torture is so miserable and my friends the most beautiful thing happened but it took horrible situations to shock me out of all that training all that dna information passed in from parents and preachers and schools and it, it took a shocking things to happen. I ended up in a, a Christian cult in Texas where they abused me. I was uh, just around the worst situations. I went into the army where they told me that's a good thing. That's a God thing, a patriotic thing. I didn't see any good or God when I was in the army. I didn't see any good or God when I was in that Christian cult in Texas. And, and then I got behind the scenes uh, here in the States, you know, uh, with what people would consider the most successful preachers, Christian preachers, and I got behind the scenes. They were thieves. They were perverts. They were just money grabbers. It was just a business to them. There was no love, no God. And it was so depressing. But you know what? It shook me out of that lie. It, it didn't matter the programming at this point. They were liars, okay? It was false. It was fake. And I could see through it all. I'd seen their politics. I've seen their religion. I've seen their armies. I've seen the spirit behind it. And it wasn't the highest principle, good God. It don't matter what they called them, Jehovah, Allah, Shivas, whatever. It ain't the all good spirit. And I wanted the all good spirit. And my friends, the most beautiful thing happened. Uh, my neighbor here still lives here. Love the guy. He's a religious professor. He just fed me books because that's what that was his job, religion. And religion's always been a study, a, a hobby of mine. And he gave me all these different books, Buddhism, Taoism, Zoroastrianism. I never heard of Zoroastrianism at that time. It literally changed my life. Matter of fact, I've got the book sitting right here. The Teachings of the Magi is one of the books he gave me. I never read anything like this. A God that is all good, all love, all peace, all joy. And to find out that was the original monotheistic religion that Christianity, Christianity, Islam, Judaism all branched off of. And then they messed it up. My God, I can't tell you how excited I was. Now I've got, I mean, I don't even know how many books on Zoroastrianism, all their texts, all their history. You know, I wanted to know everything about it. And it changed my life because my idea of the highest good changed. And then I learned about becoming that. You align with that energy. You hold that original word of unconditional love, of peace, of joy, of kindness. No matter what's going on around you, what your Christian friends are saying, what your parents are saying, you know, what your preacher is saying, you hold those highest ideas and you change. Something changes. You rewire your subconscious mind. Uh, you Basically, you're re-hypnotizing yourself for something better for 
truth for something good, you know, and it changes the world. We change the individual and we change the world. So my wonderful friend, I know exactly what you're going through. I've been there, but you know what? Some of those darkest times uh, when I really had to dig deep and think, what do I believe about this? Not what someone said, not even what I, I as the Magus tell you. What is spirit telling you? What is God telling you? And you get in these, what I consider my dark cave places, and I had to just spend that intimate time with spirit and, and just be a child, you know? Uh, put yourself in that place let spirit hypnotize you with truth instead of the world you know and I would just say okay they're saying this this and this is that true or is this true or is there another truth and my God he will come to you and he will guide you and he will lead you because inside of you is a perfect spirit of fervashi a divine spark my friends you come from good spirit you are made of good spirit and you will return to good spirit and we're lucky here. Uh, we're blessed. I'll tell you what, we have this community of believers of the highest good, all praying and believing for each other. And my friends, that does something. When we all pray with each other, when we love each other, when we create this community, it brings information and truth quickly. It brings healing quickly. And, and there's a protection in it. There's a safety in it. That we create that light around us that the darkness can't come in. Just don't let it in. Don't let them in your minds. And my friends, don't be scared to do that work. I, I know what you're feeling. There's times like I, I would go into that dark cave place and I'd be thinking, okay, uh, I, I'll give you an example. The one was Jesus in the fig tree, cursing the fig tree. And they're saying, well, how could Jesus curse something, you know, because we teach good spirit only blesses, can't curse. And so I had to do a serious study and I stayed up all night just in prayer and meditation. And I had one of the most beautiful interactions with spirit and all was explained to me in a way that I could understand. Someone else could have told me those exact words and it wouldn't have really meant anything because it's another opinion, another idea, another story until you get it directly from spirit. And when you get it that way, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's about our interaction with spirit being one with spirit. It's not about just taking on another religion or someone else's belief. It's you becoming one with God. The two become one, that holy union. That's what this is all about. And so what do we want to come into union, oneness with? The highest truth, the perfect creator's perfect idea Asha. So my friend, I hope that helped you. I'm so proud of all you're doing. And if any of you have questions, uh, please put it in the comments because what a great way to make videos. You know, it made it easy today when I was thinking, well, okay, well, what am I going to do? I'll just answer a question. I hope I did a good job of it. And uh, you can get Asha by Winston Head at Amazon. Of course, I got my Asha shirt on today. I, I don't care. It's hot in summer. I love this hoodie. I don't want to take it off. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. Share these messages. Let's spread Asha. Let's change ourselves, change the world. I love you. We'll see you tomorrow.